<laughs> okay, guys. This is this is a little me. I know we're in COVID and all this. That's why I'm wearing a mask. But um, boy, I'll tell you this: this um, airstream has. I wore this sort of my lucky railroad cap because I'm right here next to a train station and the folks at this particular location which I will not divulge have been very gracious in allowing me during COVID to restore this now this is I must admit definitely a labor a labor of love um, and it is a lot to to um, a lot to, to, to bite off. I guess that's the right way to put it. Um, but she is coming along. I mean, let me see if I can get you to look in there. I'm going to put that camera in there. I'll, I'll give a better tour, obviously, in the next video as far as the, the progress. But so she's kind of, she's kind of come together in terms of She's sealed up. I mean, I have to go over it meticulously, you know, to see to seal every little crack. You see how I haven't done here? See the difference? That can see the difference here. This is not sealed, and this is sealed. So she has every see every window seam. You see, has been sealed. So see here, I here. You see what I'm saying? So basically, every little area where she can leak from has been sealed. Um, see? So hopefully now, and oh, by the way, this was, this was tough. This was a difficult deal to seal. I'm getting new, I don't want to polish these. Uh, I want new light lens covers but I just think it'll look really spiffy rather than resurrecting these ones which are slightly weathered you know and um, it's not something I mandatorily have to do but I'm telling you when you put in new light lenses on any restoration it really ups the game these are these are uh, new LED all the way around and she has been sealed, see? She's been sealed. And this is a tough, it's a lot of work sealing. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work to do every, check every single rivet. And, um, and you know, how I do these, these just here, I don't know if I can show you this, but, but I will seal with Trempro, um, and I'll, then I'll go back over it the next day and I shall remove all of the Trempro from to make the rivet look nice on the roof. That way, I'm pretty much guaranteed not to have any leak issues. Even the window area, see this window area? I go down it very meticulously and I make sure that she's not got any leak potential problems there. Also, on my awning, I've done the same thing. Now, I went, I polished this girl, and she looked fabulous. But then you have to go back in and seal it. See, I'm going to seal this door right here. See, there's a few little areas I haven't done. Oh, and I haven't, well, I haven't actually done this either. The door I haven't done. But, I mean, basically, once she's sealed, um... I don't think it'll leak. It's a lot of work, I'm telling you guys. Every little thing has to be covered. Now, this, these are the holes for the bracket for the window covers. And on this girl, I'm gonna put stone guards in front here, but I want the stone guards to be polished like the, like the uh, trailer. I took the logo off, polished the crap out of her, 
Last thing to do, oh yeah, by the way, this of course, you see, this is the kind of thing you have to look at. It's the kind of, you know, removing the sticker. I just buff it off. And uh, I'm going to polish this thing up really nice. One of the last polishing things I'm going to have to do. But basically what's left is finishing the weather treatment, the water sealing, and then putting on the awning. There's an antenna piece right here. I'm buying a new antenna bit. And I'm going to install my electrical, or excuse me, my plumbing. I've already done my electrical, um, done my furnace. So, long story short, you know, see how that's sealed? So, long story short, where are my, uh, um, My electrical is in the back. I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put the water input here. This is right about here, I believe, because this is a really good area. You got your water there, and your water here. This is a nice spot. I really looked into it and thought that that would be the place to do it. The electrical I keep away from the water just because this was a super awesome upgrade you plug in that little girl and also you can kind of see where that sign is there down in here this is going to be for little extra pieces you can throw whatever you want in there um, I'm going to for my my drain. I'm buying a um, a long tube that essentially you can just pull pull it out here and put your your drain tube back into the drain tube receptacle. That I think is a lot cleaner than having to bring it from there and put it in here. It's dirty. I like it to be in its own little world. And that way you can, I need to touch that up by the looks of things. And that way um, this bumper can be used for whatever, extraneous stuff. So there's my update on the QM3. That's what I'm tentatively entitled, given her a name, Queen Mary 3. My belly pan is all gone through. I'm installing LED undercarriage lighting, which I believe I will get to hopefully today. And I'm gonna do a, treat, a paint, a, a truck bed tra treatment for the underbelly. The entire underbelly will be sprayed with uh, the truck bed treatment or the um, undercarriage special paint that they actually have for underbellies. But I like that truck bed treatment maybe for around here it might gives it perhaps a more rugged sustainable look so that's the update um it has been a really long process it's been six months to get it to this point i mean you can even see where i've updated my gas lines um i'm going to spray that black to match obviously but you know oh, just to give you an update on this See here, I've actually put some nice newer, I mean, my camera looks horrible, I know guys, but I put some nice new tanks in there. Uh, once I get the system going, and I know everything is kosher, and um, then I have these other two tanks. Well, I have one that came with it, which is the Worthington tank, which I got recertified, and that will be polished to match, because it's one of those really expensive, aluminum light aluminum tanks so i'm going to buy another one they're like 250 bucks on ebay and then i'm going to polish both of those and that will be my my project just sort of like an after the fact project to get those here get this thing polished up this was my base coat that i put on here i knew that i'd have to sand it down and 
and, and get a nice finished coat on there. But um, that way my secondary tanks will be these, and uh, these will be in the bed of the tow vehicle as um, extra propane for boondocking and the like. So that way you won't run out of propane very easily and you can stay out for quite a considerable amount of time. I've also got a, a generator which will come along as well, a gas powered generator. Um, I, I believe I'm going to get a second generator that can run off of both gasoline and propane. Um, that way, no matter what, I'm set in terms of being out in the middle of nowhere and having power um, with propane running the refrigerator and the shower and, and the stove and the heater. Essentially, you can live um, with, with a very little electricity if you, if you go with a propane type of situation because it runs your, 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 your main living things. The water is my um, biggest uh, hurdle in terms of taking water. And I have an idea for that, which I'll expound upon in a further in a future video, which you guys might get a kick out of, because I personally don't drink water um, from the faucet or from a, a well. I'm really, I know I'm picky. I don't, I don't even drink water unless it's in a glass container. Like, I'll drink Perrier or whatever before I'll drink Evian, just because Evian's in a plastic bottle, and I just don't believe in that. And the water I generally drink is Mountain Valley. So I've got this idea of how I can put 10 gallons of Mountain Valley spring water in the trailer, which is heavy. But um, if I get 10 gallons in the trailer and then 10 gallons on the tow vehicle, and, you know, I've got 20 gallons of drinking water. So basically, if I drink half a gallon of water a day, I can be out for 40, 40 days. Um, boondocking, you know, with, with that water setup, with the, you know, my personal water problem, which is that I just don't like drinking water that's not pure and in glass. So anyway, and it's environmentally the way to go as well. Anyway, enough babbling from me. Um, check the next video. Um, periodic updates. This would be sort of like the six month point. And um, the next video I will, uh, I'll have the interior so that you guys can see basically what I'm gonna do next um, in terms of how I'm gonna build the furniture.